welcome back to our cottage garden. Um, we're halfway through December now, which feels really crazy. It's very much a time of stillness and things are dying back and I'm just tidying things up and putting the garden to bed for the winter, um, which I do enjoy. And although it's hard to get out here because the days are so short, at the moment it's getting dark around four o'clock. Um, I do love getting out here and feeling like I'm kind of getting organised and feeling less overwhelmed because the weeds aren't growing and everything's died back and you can kind of get a good lay of the land and assess what you want to do throughout the next year. So the main thing for me at the moment has been tidying up the leaves and people usually advise using the leaves to make leaf mulch, which is amazing, but I kind of do this in situ. So rather than mowing them with the lawnmower or putting them in a plastic bin bag, I'll just simply move them off the grass and leave them on the borders. And this gives a really nice mulch to the soil, which will eventually break down and feed the soil, but it also gives a place for insects to live and hibernate um, over the winter months. So I think it's a really good thing to do. Um, if you can get over the fact that it looks slightly unsightly. Um, the leaves that we have are mostly from an oak tree and an acer tree. Um, we have some plum trees along the length of the garden as well, but they drop their leaves really early in autumn. Um, but all of our deciduous trees have dropped their leaves now. So I think I've got one more tidy up to do with the leaf blower and then that job will be done. Um, the oak leaves do take quite a long time to break down. So you will still see those on the soil in spring, um, but it doesn't bother me. It's a nice kind of reference to the cycle of the garden and I personally feel okay with a little bit of mess here and there and I think it's a healthy thing to embrace in a garden. In the same vein, I don't cut my perennials back if I can help it. Um, there are a few things that have died that have gone sludgy so I'll cut those back but anything that's sort of dry and crispy I will leave in place as an insect habitat. Um, so you can see things do look messy but that's how things are here is less work for me and it's healthier for the ecosystem in the garden. Um, in terms of what's flowering, the hellebores are on their way, which is a favourite thing of mine. I absolutely love hellebores and I think no flowers yet, maybe, maybe one, um, but lots of promise. There's lots of buds. There's a bright pink one down there and a white one there. And last year I made a big effort adding hellebores to the garden and it's something that is going to be an ongoing process for me, but they're always going to be a favourite and I absolutely love them. And they do really well in this area because it's um, shaded by the trees in the summer um, and they like a bit of dappled shade. We're really grateful that the ducks are still allowed out in the garden and the risk of avian flu isn't too high at the moment. Um, and they are so much happier for being able to forage and walk around. And um, I'm watching them at the moment. They are very much at home. And last year we had to put them in flock down. Sometime in November, it felt really early. So it feels really good that they've had a long extended time out here and they can enjoy themselves. I've been working on a couple of structural things around the garden too. Um, so one of which was changing the edging on this border that you can see next to me. Um, I have some more left to do, so I'm halfway through this now. I've done this area here and then I've got another border next to me that I haven't started yet. Um, and I used a metal product called Ever Edge and it was quick and easy to install after I'd cleared the space. The biggest effort for me was actually clearing the area but ready to put it in. Before I put this in we had some really nice bamboo woven edging that we made ourselves in lockdown and it was kind of sad to say goodbye to it and we made it from the old um, bamboo that we cleared out from the garden when we first moved in that had gotten invasive and it was everywhere and it was a nice way of using something that we were taking out of the garden it was also good to have a kind of natural structure in the garden that insects could use as a habitat as well but it was getting so lost in weeds and breaking down because it's made of natural material um, it just couldn't stay anymore and it had to go so I chose metal because I think that will have a nice long life compared to something like bamboo that was quite brittle and flimsy and broke down really quickly um, and I am debating on whether I should build a kind of willow hurdle around the edge so if you have any ideas on that please let me know um, now is the season to buy flexible willow so it's a good time to do it if I'm going to do it at all. I also wanted to say thank you so much for your support throughout this year. Um, this is our second year doing YouTube and it's been really, really lovely and so nice reading your comments and feeling a sense of community and just being among other people who find escape in their gardens has been really lovely. And we're also really, really grateful to those of you that have joined our Patreon this year and have helped us buy plants for the garden. So thank you so much. And if you enjoy these videos, please do like, comment and subscribe and you can watch our journey in the garden as it unfolds over the future months.
I have also been finishing other structural things around the garden. So me and Aaron finally finished installing these hazel hurdles on either side. Last time I showed you around, we'd done this side. Um, and then in the last couple of weeks, we've done the other side as well. Um, so I just hope that they have a good long life. They are quite flimsy, but they're very beautiful and we really love them. I feel like this area has such a nicer feeling being enclosed and private and not having those trellises that I just couldn't cover. Um, sometimes I think you have to just accept defeat with ideas and move on to the next thing. So I'm really glad we've done that. I have finally also finished bulb planting. Um, so I think the total this year was something like 3,200. And I was actually going to have a low effort year for bulb planting this year. Um, but for a couple of reasons that didn't happen and one is just simply because I love it and when I've not got anything to do and I want to feel motivated getting bulbs in the ground just really helps me feel like I've got something to look forward to and I love the process of doing something that feels quite um, it's high intensity but it's not so exhausting that you can't face doing it um, so bulb planting is something that I always love doing um, and then the other reason is because I had some news about an exciting project come in and I'm working on that at the moment but I just wanted to make sure that spring has a kind of wow factor um, so that we can take good photos for that and I absolutely can't wait to share that with you when the time comes. This year um, I decided to just use a spade when I'm putting the bulbs in the lawn. I've always gone for a bulb planter and done them one or two at a time um, but this year it was much more efficient to dig up the whole area with a spade and do a kind of lasagna method where I'm putting bigger bulbs like daffodils underneath and then a layer of soil and then crocuses or other small bulbs and then putting the turf back over the top. Um, so I can't wait to see what that looks like. Then there's a couple of other things that I think about this time of year and one of them is getting a mulch on the soil. So obviously we've done that around here with leaves so I'm not too worried about adding compost at the moment. But there are parts of the garden where I grow vegetables or I rotate what I'm growing more quickly and in there I want to add a nice layer of mulch and get some more nutrients in the ground. Um, so I've started doing that and I have done a humongous duck clear out with about seven wheelbarrows of um, semi-composted duck mess which will be amazing for the soil. Um, so I use that to build up our raised beds, particularly where we grow asparagus and kale. Um, and I just need to do another bit of mulching in the polytunnel. But then after that, I'm feeling like that is enough and the soil is kind of maintained and nourished, which is um, a really important part of gardening for me, making sure that we're looking after the soil um, and the long term health of the garden. I also try to make sure there are a few things growing over winter in the polytunnel just so there's some life in the soil. Um, so I've got a few kale plants, some chard, a bit of garlic dotted around and I have a couple of trays of broad beans that I've germinated over the last couple of weeks that I will be adding to the polytunnel. Um, but they're looking really lovely and broad beans are something that I like to grow over winter so you can see that kind of early growth all the way through winter to motivate you to get back into things when spring comes around. In terms of planning my seeds for next year, I haven't. Um, I do like to take stock of my seeds over winter and figure out what I've got and then what I need to buy, but I just haven't done it yet. And I think even if I don't get round to it, I know that I've still got plenty left over from last year and I don't want to buy too much for the garden every year. So I might end up just using last year's seeds and then swapping some with friends or neighbours. We'll see, um, but I'm not putting too much pressure on myself in that sense. Once I've finished mulching, I'm going to move on to cleaning a few things. Um, I still haven't cleaned the big greenhouse and I think I tell you in every video at the moment that I'm going to do that. I do need to do it. It's very mossy um, and it needs a bit of TLC. So that's something that's on my list but hasn't been a priority over the last few weeks. But I think it's moving into the priority stage now. Now that the days are getting shorter, one thing that I'm going to be doing is watching back all of the videos that we've made this year and looking at photos and writing down what went well, what didn't go well, what we learned. And I will put that together and make a year reflection video for you and we can see how things progress throughout all of the seasons. And I think it's really important to do something like that so you can look back and feel a sense of achievement and think about what you've learned. Um, I think it's quite easy to keep thinking about the future and the things that you need to do and it's important to take the time to look back and celebrate the things that we did and what we enjoyed. Um, so that will be our next video. Um, do look out for that. That more or less concludes December from the Cottage Garden but do make sure you subscribe and look out for that yearly recap video and we will see you next time. Thank you for watching.